Hello everyone, it is Canadian Futures Trader here, and in this video, I'm basically going to walk you through some of the basics of Rhythmic. Our Trader Pro is essentially their software. Uh, it is probably what you are most familiar with if you are in any of the trader evaluations. They pretty much all use Rhythmic. Uh, unless you're in Top Step and you chose the uh, the Trade of Eight or the Top Step Trader software, which is basically Trade of Eight, uh, you wouldn't see this. But nonetheless, uh, at some point in your trading career, you will probably come across Rhythmic. So, uh, starting with the login page, real simple. You'll be provided with login details from whichever trading company you're with, whether it's a live account or a trader valuation. Put in your user ID, your password. Uh, they will instruct you what to put here, but typically it is rhythmic paper trading. You're trading on SIM when you're in the trading evaluations. Uh, you'll pick the gateway that's closest to you. So Chicago happens to be the one closest to me. Now, I already have a few things enabled, but I have on market data and allow plugins. Uh, and then you have to separately put your login here. The reason for this is if you run other software on top of Rhythmic, so for example, I use Jigsaw, this is what allows Rhythmic to basically share its information with Jigsaw. So you would put in your account information and hit the little green arrow. Now, the first time you log in, it will prompt you to look at two agreements. So you you know, click on them, bring them up. I forget if you have to click the little box that says you agree or whatever, uh, but that's it. You should only have to do that once, but you will get that the first time you log in. Okay, so once you're logged into Rhythmic, you will see a dashboard something like this. Now I've noticed different companies, so like for example, Lilu and uh, OneUp, for example. This might look slightly different. You might, may or may not see the uh, launch bar on the side. You know, this is Lilu, so you see Lilu Trader Dashboard. So uh, this might look slightly different, but essentially you will be logged into Rhythmic. Now, I do have the Trader Dashboard up. Uh, and we will go over that first since I have this up. So uh, this happens to be my Lilu account on day number five of the evaluation. So a couple things worth pointing out. Uh, you see natural trading here. That's actually like the parent company of Lilu. So uh, that's what that is about or the uh, filtered. So if you had multiple accounts, you could drop down filtered and choose which account you want to see. Uh, it does put your full account number and uh, and whatnot, so I have those kind of condensed. Uh, your account balance, which is important. So this is your actual closed account balance. Uh, auto liquidate threshold, important. Uh, with all of these valuations, they have trailing drawdowns. This is your trailing drawdown. This is the number you need to know. If you fall below this number, you will bust. And you notice it's exactly $3,000 below my account balance. That's because uh, Lilu has a $3,000 trailing balance. Uh, cash on hand. So, and I should go back to this actually. So if I had a losing trade, let's say I lost a thousand dollars on the next trade, this would stay the same. This doesn't like bounce around with this. This only goes up. It never goes down. So if I was to punt off $3,000, this isn't going to change. I'm going to come down. I'm going to hit this and I'm going to bust. Now I've just been fortunate enough that my last several trades have all been winners. So I'm essentially just, as I keep building my account balance, I'm pulling this, uh, auto liquidate threshold value slash trailing drawdown up with it. Uh, cash on hand, And I actually take back what I said about this was after day five. I believe actually I did these screenshots on day five, but before I had traded. So if in case you're wondering, you're a diehard video watcher and you're, you're saying, hey, that wasn't your balance at the end of day five. It's not. It's the balance as of the end of day four. And then on day five, uh, this went up, luckily. So, uh, so if you drop down the file menu, so regardless of what icons you see here, if you just open file, like pretty much any program on Windows, here's where you can navigate to lots of things you're going to need. Now I can see why Rhythmic would be a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot of options here. The thing is you don't need 90% of this. So I'm going to show you a few of them. Uh, here's the ones that are, I consider most important. So recent orders is good. Uh, I go there to download my trade history for the day because I upload to trader view, uh, positions will show your open positions performance. Honestly, I don't particularly use that, but I do it, Again, it's just another way of looking at your account and your performance stats. Uh, Trader dashboard, that's what we looked at already, so that was already open. Uh, but you can uh, open it up again if you need, or if you X'd out of there, you could easily come here, open your Trader dashboard. Order history, same thing, another history metric. I mean, options board, futures options, binary contracts, not using any of this stuff uh, in the trading combines. 
uh, strategies, etc. Like I don't touch on. So basically, once you get past Trader Dashboard, I don't touch any of this stuff until we get down to charts. So charts again is another one where there's actually an icon on here, or just open file charts, and that's where you can start a new chart. And I'm going to show you how to create a chart. Uh, indices, uh, third-party widgets I don't use, profile, blah, 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 no. So there you go. The most important things, recent orders, positions, performance, if you want to look at your performance. Uh, order book, I will show you the order book. That's basically the depth of market. It's their version, uh, essentially. And then I think the charts are the most important. So this really quick is boring, but um, if you open up that positions uh, menu item, basically, again, I haven't taken any trades at this point for the day. So there's no fills and there's no positions. If you had had trades that were complete, they would be down here. If you had positions that were open, they would be here. Again, this is a good screen. If you just want to double check that you have no open positions, you're done for the day. Okay, so this is the order book. Again, you could have got there by going file you know file click on file and click on order book or you have the little shortcut icons these are really just shortcuts to everything that's in the file menu so there's order book right here uh order book is essentially the depth of market the dom if you've seen me trade i trade in jigsaw uh and i mentioned before why i like it is because there's lots more information available you see here what a traditional depth of market has it has the limit uh the buy orders the sell orders the current price bit of a histogram and that's basically it so uh you could trade off of the dom uh what i have hidden here is just my account information i brought up the crude oil dom can set your quantity and trade off of here now i i honestly this screenshot you're looking at is the very first time i even looked at the depth of market in rhythmic so i'm not familiar if you can uh, click and trade whatnot that you would have to test that on yourself quite honestly so um, i'm assuming you can uh, i mean they have quantity orders here so i'm assuming you can set your quantity and the trade right off this depth of market i'll leave it at that so getting to charts where it is i'll spend most of the rest of the video again you can get there go file charts or there was that shortcut in the uh in the list of icons so that's how you bring up a chart we'll take a look at that now Okay, so this is where the fun begins, and I think where most people will end up. So you bring up a new chart, and you're thinking, what do I do? Um, so I will say, it's not the most intuitive uh, product. So you need to write out the symbol, a period, and then the exchange. So I still stumble on this sometimes. The other day, I was trying to open crude oil, and I was completely blanking on which exchange it was on. Um, and it's good. Now you can search for it and that's what I'm going to show you in the next slide. But just to give you an idea, you'll enter your symbol here. It'll populate all the chart information and then you can bring up your account information as well. But I'll show you all of that. So, but this is what basically what a blank chart looks like when you first open charts. Okay. So if you double click on that top left part of the chart where it says symbol dot exchange, uh, it will bring up this, you see add symbol. You have a couple of options here. I'm gonna show you in two screenshots shots how to do it. One, you can navigate and try to find what you need and I'll show you that in a second. Or you can just search. So I search CL. It brings up anything that has CL in it. So this is a fairly long list, uh, but if you see, if you scroll down here, it has generic CL and it has the front month, which is usually what you wanna trade. The current front month is uh, April, which actually just changed, I believe in the last day. Uh, and you see that here, CLJ, CLH is what we had been trading up to this point. So, and actually I take that back. Sorry, it's not April, it's March is, uh, is the front month. So, um, so you can search for it or you can search, find it in the menu over here. So if you navigate over here, I know crude oil trades on the NYMEX, drop it down, CL, list of products. This is maybe a little bit cleaner way to see it because now it's only crude oil products and you could select the front month. So basically here's what happens. If you just choose front month, your chart will always show whatever the current front month is. You don't have to worry about uh, updating it every single month. If you want to force it to show a specific product though, you could certainly choose that month. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with these month codes, so CL is obviously the product that's crude oil. Uh, the, the next letter here, the J, the K, the M that you're seeing right here, that indicates which month it is. And then the digit on the end indicates what year. So 2021 is a one, uh, 2022 is a two down here. For these months, if you wanna know what these are, go to the CME website, I forget the specific address, uh, and just search uh, front month letter codes. You will find what these are and it'll list them out for every single product. So uh, good to become familiar with them or just, I mean, just go look them up or just choose front months. You'll always have the current front month uh, on your chart.
So if you double click on one of these, it will then put it on the chart. Now I learned, I mean, I'm learning stuff as I'm navigating through this too. It doesn't actually close this. So I double clicked on this, nothing happened. I double clicked it, double clicked it. Finally, I said, what's going on? I closed this and sure enough, it, it had actually populated to the chart. You just have to close this window. Okay, so after double clicking, realizing that it's now in here, here you go, clj1.nymex. Uh, here's what it shows. So it'll show some price information. You have your chart and it does not show your account information yet but i'll show you what that looks like you can populate your account information but basically this is what you get so if you clicked on that account up here and dropped it down choose your account um, i have blanked out my full account number here but then you can see your p l and your account balance now uh, your p l is your p l for this product so uh, Let's say I had a CL chart open and an NQ chart and an ultra bond chart. It's only going to show your profit. So I didn't trade uh, CL. Now at this point I hadn't traded anything this day, but uh, if I had traded NQ, for example, this P and L would still be zero because my P and L for crude oil is zero. This account balance though is updated. It's just your account balance. It doesn't matter which products you trade it. This is just your overall account balance. Now, so that's it for screenshots. I'm going to move now into a video that I made um, actually after I did trade on this day. So you're going to see the account balance be slightly different and uh, we'll go from there and I'll explain a little bit more about this chart and how to navigate it and how to use it. Okay guys, now with Rhythmic, now that I covered kind of just where you navigate to to see your account, how to open up a chart, how to find a product, I figured I'd walk you through to the best of my ability some of the things you can do on the charts. Again, I reiterate that I honestly don't really trade in Rhythmic, but I know enough of the basics to kind of point you in the right direction. So uh, showing you what I know essentially. So I brought up crude oil. Uh, you can drop down that box up here that says account and then, then I have my account number hidden, uh, but it will show here your total P&L and your account balance. So. If you're curious, I'm recording this on a day when I finished uh, Lilu day number five. So this was my balance day number five. Now your P&L here isn't your P&L across all products. It's your P&L for the specific product. Now on this day, I traded NQ. So P&L for this is zero. If I brought up an NQ chart, it would show my profit for that day for NQ. So just know that, that your P&L, don't get worried. You know, your P&L is, is product specific. Your balance is just your balance. Um, you have a few things here that are fairly easy to do. So uh, Look back or period from, so that's, you know, what time period is this going to show? I usually uncheck this only because I tend to trade in the evenings a lot of times too. And this, you know, I mean, you can as well click on any of these and adjust the hours. I'm just going to leave them. Uh, hide empty bars. I usually don't touch. Show 4D bars. I like to adjust this one. So 4D is like the default. I'll usually change it to something. I mean, it depends on what I'm doing, quite honestly. But like I'll change it to 60 bars, get a little bit more concise chart. Uh, show trade bar. I'm going to click on that and you will see magically. This is where you can obviously trade. We'll come back to this. Uh, the other thing I like to do, this box comes up by default. Uh, I'm sure there's a way to turn it off. I haven't figured out. Again, I don't really trade in here, so I'm not too worried about setting this up very specifically. I mainly keep the chart up for a couple reasons. One, it's a quick way to see your balance. Two, if I ever had an issue trading in Jigsaw, which I use, I could pop over here and get myself out of a trade, you know, quickly if I had to. So um, I do condense this box. If you right click on this, you can go compact mode. It just uh, will scoot it over. Um, that's basically all I do for setup. So in terms of like other stuff, if you want to change the bar color, you want to change it from uh, candlesticks to Renko, whatever you want to do, I would encourage you to just pop up here, start exploring the menus. So be very careful that you're not clicking around though and buying something, selling something. So uh, if I had a demo account right now, I would honestly log into it and do that. Cause unfortunately I can't really show you actually executing a trade because it's connected to my actual account and I don't really want to execute trades now. I just kind of want to show you what it is all about. So, okay. So what I've done is I actually hid the account balance because it condenses this upper area and it gives us more real estate down here. And what I really want to show you is this. Now this is where all your order execution is going to come. Again, I'm only showing you what I know. I'm sure there's a way to turn on a feature where you can execute orders directly on the chart. I sh there probably is. I don't know 100% now. Um, but basically, I think this is somewhat self-explanatory at this point. So for one, you're going to have order defaults. You can set those and you click on these. So right now, quantity is zero. I could change this to one, two, five. And I mean, you can set your own. These are just presets. So maybe I set it to two contracts. So uh, what that is doing now, oops, I keep clicking on it. 
let's click off there we go um quantity two so if i do any of this stuff if i hit buy market it's going to do quantity two that's what my default is set up to so be aware of that it's not going to pop up anything it's not going to ask you it's just going to go with your default same thing with sell now I mean, I'm not so much giving a lesson on the specifics each. Obviously, buy market is just going to buy at the current market price. You're going to get in at whatever price it's at. Same thing with sell. Uh, buy the ask, join the ask, join the bid, uh, sell the bid, etc. I'll leave that to you to, uh, you know, join the bid. You're basically putting a limit order. Let's put it that way. Uh, same thing with join the ask. Um, one click buy limit, one click buy. Honestly, guys. I don't know. I mean, to be frank with you, again, I don't do a lot of training in here. I'm just trying to give you at least a clue as to where to go to like start learning uh, this. So I'm not 100% with this. Uh, bracket. Now, there is a way to uh, set up bracket orders, and I, I'm pretty sure it's if you click on bracket. So you click on bracket, you can set up brackets. If you're not familiar with brackets are, it's usually where you would set uh, a take profit and a stop loss, or you can just set one or the other. So if you set up some default brackets, what the nice thing is, and then you, what you would do is click enabled. So you might say, hey, look, anytime I enter a trade, automatically put a three tick stop loss and a 10 tick take profit, whatever you want it to be. And you could set all these up here, give them names, boom, you're done. Now I'm not gonna do that, but yeah, so you would do those here. So let's say I set up exactly that, a 10, a 10 tick take profit, a three tick stop loss, I think I said. You would then have a drop down of all the different brackets you created, you'd hit enabled, Oh, well, I guess I would need to set one up, but you would hit enabled, it would go green. And then anytime you enter a transaction, your bracket will automatically populate as well. So if I went by market, boom, I'm in a trade for two contracts and my bracket would pop up instead of three tick stop loss, a 10 tick take profit. I think two of the most important buttons on here, honestly, are going to be these two cancel all and flatten or just cancel all. Uh, reverse position is self-explanatory. Let's say you're long three contracts it starts working against you. You're like, crap, I just want to get out of this. But not only that, I think it's going to like plummet. Um, you might hit reverse position. It's going to do exactly that. It's going to sell off your, your long position. It's going to enter a short position. You could do that quickly. Now, I don't typically tend to do that. I'm, I'm not trying to chase the market all around. But um, cancel all, what that does is it'll cancel any open orders. So that previous example I gave where, say, you enter a long position for two contracts and you had your bracket on. So you're going to have a 10 tick take profit, a three tick stop loss. In my example, you can set those to what you want. Cancel all will cancel those open orders. So it'll cancel your stop loss. It'll cancel your take profit. It does not do anything with your actual position, with your actual trade. Cancel all and flatten. Flatten is the keyword you want to know. Flatten means get me out of every position, whatever the current market price is out. So usually, I mean, there's a couple scenarios to use this. Obviously the market's going completely against you. Uh, you just and like just just say it's falling and falling. You don't have time to get in there and try to set a limit or right? you're just like give me the hell out of this trade. Hit that button, you're out. I mean you're probably taking a loss because you're you're getting out for a reason. Uh, but it'll just get you out of position. You don't have to worry about well how many contracts was I in, etc. Just hit cancel all flatten. So it cancels all any open orders and it will flatten your position. Now there is you can use this and I use uh, the flatten button in Jigsaw often as well. Uh, if you're in a profitable position, say I'm long two contracts in whatever product, let's say it's CL and the price just spikes up and I, and I see that. And let's say I didn't have a take profit. Uh, it spikes up and I'm like, Oh geez, like I want to get this, but I, I have a pretty good feeling that it's probably going to come crashing right back down. If I could just hit flatten really quick, I might be able to grab that. I don't have to worry about okay, what price is it at? You know, should I, should I set a stop, move my stop, any of that just hit flatten and you're out and hopefully grabbing a bunch of profits. So uh, think of it as an emergency button, kind of both on the good side and the bad side. And that is basically it, guys. That is the extent of my knowledge in charts. Sorry if it's very, you know, brief or rudimentary. Again, I honestly don't trade in here. I don't think, I think I traded in Rhythmic once and it was about half a year ago. And I, I don't even remember why I did it. Um, so there you go. But the tools are all here. And the thing is, is these buttons, these, you know, buy, sell, brackets, they're pretty universal across all platforms. There might be different ways of getting to them and setting them up and whatnot. But, you know, any software you use is going to have a bracket type order or a flatten button, et cetera. Buy market or buy, you know, join the bid, et cetera. So uh, definitely spend some time. Like I mentioned, if you can connect to like a, a SIM account, and I don't mean SIM like your, your actual trader combine account, which is technically SIM. I mean a true SIM where you're not risking anything. Uh, mess around with these and play with, uh, play with the charts. Get them set up how you like, and you can go from there.